There are at least three ways to build most EDH decks. Strong! Fun! Fun! And mean. Let's look at the strong, fun, and mean ways that I would build Renar the Ever Watchful. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Today we're going to talk about Renar, the ever watchful, and three different ways that I think you could approach building this commander deck. But first, if you would, go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this commander. So, Renar the Ever Watchful, one of our Kaldheim mechanic commanders from the pre-con. One blue, one white, two other for a 2-3 spirit warrior, flying vigilance. The first card you foretell each turn costs zero to foretell. If you're not familiar, foretell is a two-cost ability, two colorless mana, to foretell a card, which means exile it face down from your hand, and you can cast it on a later turn for whatever its foretell cost is. That other piece of text there, whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand and or permanents from the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. So we've got two different ways that we can kind of approach this. We can either lean heavily into foretell or we can work on blinking our permanence from the battlefield or exiling cards from our hand to really take advantage of that 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying token generator. Also being a spirit warrior, we've got two relevant creature types that we can look at for a possible tribal deck. So the three ways that I would build Reynard, the ever watchful, the strong way, I would say let's go into a foretell deck and just lean into the mechanic itself. For fun, let's build a spirit deck and really take advantage of the fact that we're going to be making a lot of 1-1 spirits, hopefully. And for the mean way, we're going to blink stuff that's already hit the battlefield and exile cards from our hand. Let's get into the strong way. Looking at Fortell as a mechanic and commander, we've got this sort of like trap card trickery thing happening. You can see in the reminder text on Cosmos Charger, during your turn you may pay two and exile this card from your hand face down. Cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. So you can't cast it on the same turn that it is foretold unless you've got some cards like Cosmos Charger that's changing that rule. So with Charger on the battlefield and Raynar on the battlefield, the first card that we foretell each turn is going to be zero and foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be done on any player's turn. So we're already making it zero, at least for the first one. Once past that will be one to foretell and you can do this on other people's turns, meaning not just at sorcery speed on your turn. So Cosmos Charger being a flash flyer, three, three for four, really good return here when we're playing with the mechanic. We've also got cards like Glorious Protector that are going to pull du double duty. When it enters a battlefield, you can exile any number of non-angel creatures you control until Glorious Protector leaves the battlefield. So when those get exiled from the battlefield, Renar's ability for one or more cards being exiled from the battlefield triggers, and then we get one, one flying tokens. We also have a 3-4 flashing flyer for four. We can foretell it and then pay three to actually pull off this ability. So we get a lot of cool residual value with a card like Glorious Protector. We've covered Mystic Reflection in a couple of videos here on the channel. This can be an offense or a defense card. You choose a non-legendary creature on the battlefield and the next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of that chosen creature. So you can use it defensively and when your opponent's gonna play their you know, commander or whatever, we can turn that into a 1-1 one, one spirit token if we've got one on our side of the battlefield and if we're playing a huge spell huge creature or a cosmos charger or whatever and we want to do make copies of that we can cast this copy something that's already on the battlefield these 1-1 one, one tokens that ren are making for instance those could come in potentially as copies of a very powerful creature non-legendary that we already have on the battlefield that and its foretell cost being cheap is great. Raven form, this is just a common, but I would include cards like this if you're gonna build this deck because this is gonna throw people off the scent. They're not gonna know if this is your super powerful, you know, glorious protector that's gonna come in and blink some stuff out of harm's way, or if it's just a removal spell like Raven form. Exile an artifact or creature, its controller creates a 1-1 blue bird creature token with flying. And it's one blue mana, that's it. But for foretelling this for free, we're going to be able to just cast this for one blue to exile a creature. So very, very good card strong in this deck. So it coming is the same way. We want to throw people off the scent. They, you know, may always just go, oh, wow, that's a counterspell. It could at least be a counterspell. We have to think about that. It can't just be counted on that. That's, you know, mystic reflection or something like that. 
We could be countered completely. It could also be a board wipe with Doomscar. If you foretell this for the two or for free with Raynar, you've got a three mana destroy all creatures. That's pretty huge. It's just a reset button. You could potentially have it foretold in your little face down exile pile that your opponents aren't able to know what's in there. So you want to throw them off the scent. You want to trick them a little bit. If you want to go big and mythic with it, we can foretell cast this for six and create two one one blue bird creature tokens with flying, take an extra turn, and then it gets exiled, obviously. So it's not crazy broken, but it could be very powerful, especially in a deck that's running foretell as a mechanic. Then also in Kaldheim, we got a saga that plays well with foretell. That first mode, you gain two life for each foretold card in exile. Fine, whatever. That that's not hugely relevant here. But these last two, add two blue mana, spend this mana only to cast foretell cards or cast spells that have foretell so we're going to be able to get a little mana ramp going and return target card with foretell from your graveyard to your hand i think that's the most powerful mode on this to be able to cast something and get it back like say your counter spell or your doom scar with your board wipe you know you can cast it and then get it back a lot of good foretell cards also came in the pre-constructed deck i would say you know go ahead and jam all those foretell cards in here most of them are solid or at least are a play on the mechanic of a card that already exists like saw it coming as a counter spell but we play with the foretell mechanic with it and so we're able to put it into this deck as another card to you know what exactly is foretold over there i don't know what i should play around right now as an opponent of this deck that's the strong way let's look at the fun way and build a spirits deck Spirits is pretty straightforward. If you want to get into a deep dive on building a tribal deck, make sure you check out another video I have on the channel. It specifically covers tribal building for each individual color, cards that are generic to that color, but good for a tribal deck. And we will specifically in this one be going over ones that are good, obviously, for a spirit deck. So Supreme Phantom, this is going to be an anthem for all of your spirits on the battlefield. You've got a bunch of 1-1 spirits that are flyers. Now, all of a sudden, there are 2-2 two -two spirits that are flyers. That seems very, very good. Drug Skull Captain I like in particular because our commander is a spirit. And the captain says other spirit creatures you control get plus one, plus one and have hex proof. So our commander is no longer being targeted by anything that our opponents control. That's excellent for an uncommon. I'm a big fan of it. Selfless spirit is fantastic because it's going to protect anybody from a board wipe. I mean, if you've got doom scar in the deck and you cast it, sack your selfless spirit in response, creatures you control gain indestructible. Your line survives the board wipe. You start attacking down and... All of a sudden, you've got a big target on your head with just a bunch of spirit flyers in the air. Angel of Flight Alabasters, a five mana, four, four at the beginning of your upkeep return target spirit card from your graveyard to your hand. So if any of these die, you get them back. You know, longevity in an EDH deck, that's exactly what we want. Court of Grace for four mana. You're going to get the Monarch as soon as it comes into the battlefield. However, at the beginning of your upkeep, you get to create a one, one white spirit creature token with flying. And if you're the Monarch, you get a 4-4. I like this just for the residual guaranteed 1-1 Spirit Flyer every turn. It's a little expensive for just that, but having the upside of becoming the Monarch so you get an extra card at the end of that turn where you cast this, and you could potentially start creating 4-4 Flyers residually unless somebody takes Monarch from you. Court of Grace is really, really excellent in this deck. Field of Souls is another way to residually create 1-1 Spirit Flyings flying tokens whenever a non-token creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield so again this is board wipe protection if you've got a bunch of spirit creatures on the battlefield that are not tokens they get board wiped field of souls is going to say all right here's a bunch of 1-1 flyers to start rebuilding your line and then drug skull calvary another way to make spirits in this deck whenever spirit is entering the battlefield you're getting two life and that's for any spirit. That's not non-token. So every spirit that Renar creates with Drogskull Cavalry on the battlefield is going to give you two life. And then for just four mana as a mana dump, you can put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. That's a general overview of how you would pretty much want to build any tribal deck like this. Residual ways with mana dumps or just passively to create more of those creatures. Things that are going to protect them. Things that are going to, you know, increase your longevity in the EDH game where you're playing a tribal deck. In general, find spirits that you like. Find spirits that you think are strong. Jam them in there. Just make sure you've got some of those strategies in there so you can survive a long commander game. That's the fun way that I would build this. Let's look at the mean way and go with Blink. So Blink, you can approach in one of two ways. If something is being targeted and you Blink it, that thing becomes not a target and essentially the spell that was targeting it fizzles. Um, you can also 
blink creatures that are already on the battlefield to regain their etbs a lot of times this happens at the end of turn with cards that allow you to do this much like soul herder three mana for a one one whenever it's a creature exiled from the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on it and at the beginning of your in step you may exile another target creature you control then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control so you're going all right well i you know i've never built a blink deck why would it matter to have a creature leave and then come back and it's so you can get their etbs again if a card says enters a battlefield destroy an artifact you get to do that again um eerie interlude is another card that i really like with this effect it's sort of similar to tefri's protection except it falls into our keyword that we're looking for which is exile blink and exile it's all the same thing here exile any number of target creatures you control return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next 10 step be aware this doesn't work on tokens this is only going to work on creatures that are actually cards but you can protect them from a board wipe with this return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step so whatever board wipe is happening all happens and then all of your creatures come back which is huge obviously except for tokens and you get all their etbs again dead eye navigators so kind of one-off way to do this blink on a stick but it's so hard once this creature hits the battlefield and soul bonds to get rid of it as long as dead eye navigators paired with another creature which is that soul bond they remain paired as for as long as you control both of them when it enters the battlefield you have the ability to pay two, exile that creature then return it to the battlefield under your control so not only will you get the etb effects as much as you've got two mana for but you can dodge targeted removal and have your creature survive it does come right back and so it would exile and then return before a board wipe actually resolved but it does remove targeting if the spell says target creature rago king eternal is sort of the classic commander for doing this effect in an edh deck but i sort of like renar even more as your commander even though brago fits perfectly in the 99 just because of that residual passively we're creating one ones whenever this happens Brago says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So you can, again, take advantage of the ETBs on the deck. Every time that you are exiling a thing and it comes back, you're creating a 1-1 because of Renar's ability. And so you're getting all of this value going. So I keep talking about creatures with ETBs. We're in the mean section, so I'm going to give you an example of one that I think is one of the meanest. And that's Agent of Treachery. When it enters a battlefield, gain control of target permanent. And at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. We care less about that, but we do really like gain control of target permanent. All of these blink cards that we've gone over, you've got Agent of Treachery on the battlefield. You've got it with Deadeye Navigator. I mean, that's essentially going to make me want to scoop. If you play that against me and you've got some mana open to just like Agent of Treachery flick a bunch and <laughs> have all of these permanents stolen for your own control i mean it's kind of ridiculous on top of that when it exiles reynard's creating one one flyers it's just kind of a nuts I i'm really excited to play this deck because i think that there's a lot of nuts ability with this deck to really pop off when at first glance the commander seems like a really focused onto its own you know set mechanic sort of commander scroll rack i wanted to mention a couple of cards here that aren't directly what i'm talking about here with blink but are really going to take advantage of reynard's passive ability to create 1-1 one, one flyers scroll rack says pay one tap it exile any number of cards from your hand face down you can see on Raynar whenever you exile one or more cards from your hand or permanents from the battlefield so exiling cards from your hand you're gonna get one one flyer put that many cards from the top of your library into your hand and then scroll rack happens then you can look at the top uh, you can look at the exile cards and put them on top of your library in any order and it's just this way of like you know continuously fixing your hand getting the cards you actually want um scroll rack's fantastic in this deck it's fantastic in general effects like memory jar are also going to be the same thing tap it sack memory jar each player exiles all cards from his or her hand face down and draws seven cards yet again we're exiling cards from our hand we're also getting the value of memory jar but we're getting residual value from renar creating one one flyers and thank you to the discord thanks to our patrons they suggested this card for the deck moon ring mirror five mana for an artifact whenever you draw a card remove the top card of your library from the game face down at the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove your hand from the game. So that's exiling those cards from your hand, which is what Renar's looking for. And if you do put it in, put into your hand all other cards you own removed from the game with Moon Ring Mirror. So you can just kind of constantly be swapping out your hand, looking for options. Oh, no, that removal spell I need is in that pile. Let's at the beginning of the upkeep, remove the 
remove my hand from the game, put the put into my hand the cards that were removed, and you're just sort of like continuously getting more cards and more value from this moon ring mirror. That's the strong fun and mean ways that I would build Renar the Ever Watchful. Let's close the book. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Let me know how you would build Renar the Ever Watchful. Like I said, this seemed like it was just out of the box, a very focused, mechanic-driven commander for a mechanic from just one set, which typically won't have enough support to build a competitive or even strong EDH deck around. But Renar really plays with mechanics that already exist as well. And so I really think that he's got a lot of potential. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button on your way out. It really helps us out. Other than that, I'm tapped out and I'll catch you later.